Do you ever struggle with not knowing where to start or what to focus on in your business? Do you ever doubt your ideas and your abilities? Do you feel unfulfilled and unhappy with where you're at in your business? Do you get stuck in analysis paralysis? Do you feel like you're unsupported and doing it alone? Do you wish you had a clear game plan? Do you feel overwhelmed, stressed, or pressured? Do you feel like you could be playing a much bigger game, but you continuously kind of feel this stuck feeling, or maybe you're second guessing yourself or hiding out and playing small when you know you can step out and play much bigger? If you just answered yes in your head to any of those questions, then I have got something for you, sister, something that I've designed specifically for ambitious women who are ready to take their online presence, their brand, their business to the next level and want that expert support and guidance and accountability along the way. My Female on Fire Mastermind is launching in April. It is an exclusive online, very intimate mastermind where you are going to learn so much and accomplish so much in nine weeks. If there's one thing that I'm known for is my relentless commitment to results and high accountability. My group containers are extremely structured, organized, and set up for every member to win. I am like a maniac on a mission committed to you achieving your results. Anyone who is in that container, I'm literally thinking about you while I'm in the shower. That's, <laughs> that's how intimate we're getting in here. And you just, you just can't fail in this container. You will create powerful results. It's happened time and time again. And if you want to learn more about the mastermind, go to www.fofmastermind.com. I can guarantee you right now, there is no other online mastermind like this. I'm 100% confident when I say this. So go to www.fofmastermind.com now, learn more and apply. And now back to the show. I am so excited about today's guest. I am a huge fan, have been a fan of hers for probably the last six years. I've read most of her books, if not all of them, and her work has transformed the way that I understand, perceive, and relate with men. And it's just such an honor to have her on the show today, and I'm so excited for you to meet her and to learn from her today. Alison Armstrong has been studying men, women, and the predicament of gender, <laughs> educating men and women about each other, really for the last 40 or so years. She is an absolute expert, and she founded PAX PAX Programs Incorporated with the mission of altering society's culture by transforming the way women relate to men. Allison is also recently single. She was married to Greg, her husband, who passed in 2019. So she also brings such a cool perspective on being single in today's world and also what she's kind of navigated through in her process so far. And I just thought this was really cool for her to open up and share. She shared so vulnerably and so authentically. This made me have even more respect for her. So this episode was absolutely amazing. I'm so grateful that she came on the show. Without further ado, let's dive in. Allison, thank you so, so much for coming on the show today, for being a part of this Female on Fire series. I am so amped up and excited to have you here. So thank you for giving up your time and energy to be here today. You're welcome. I, I love that title, Female on Fire. Yeah, and you are definitely <laughs> most certainly that. <laughs> yes. So starting off, I, I, of course, I'm a huge fan. I know your pain of power story, but I'm sure a lot of my listeners do not. So I would love to hear from you that pain to purpose. You really, I know one thing I will say is, ladies, Allison, believe it or not, used to be a man hater, as I've heard you say before. So can you kind of tell us that story and how you got here? I can do the, the two minute or the two day version of that story. Um, but basically, I think what matters is that I, I was normal. You know, I was normal. I had, uh, my parents were divorced when I was 11 years old. 
I believed everything my mother said about my father. So all her anger and resentment, uh, I just picked up, you know, like a like a good daughter would. And I had I have two brothers, older and younger, and and just I just had all the normal beliefs about who men are. Right? They're selfish. They're self-centered. Uh, you know, once we come of age, there's only one thing they want from you. Uh, you can't trust them. They're liars and cheaters, and <laughs> and and anything they can do, we can do better. That got added right mm -hmm. when I was about ten or twelve years old, and definitely, uh, you, every woman needs a man. You you need it. You you need to have a man, but don't need the man. Right. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean by that? One. You must have one, but don't need one. Um, so mm. be, you know, independent and self-sufficient, and know how to take care of yourself. But make sure you have the ring on your finger and the man on your arm, or your your worth is questionable. And so just all that stuff. And um, you know, I got married young, and it was awful. And you know, because I thought happily ever after and the minister had fairy dust, you know, <laughs> that all he had to do was say, I do. And then it would turn out and he was the exact same person, do you know, <laughs> mm. after the ceremony as he was before. And, and there are ways that the Queen's Code, Kimberly's ex-husband is like mine, you know, very independent, um, loves to be alone, prefers to be alone, and um, actually married two men like that. Um, I was slow to catch on, which is why being single after Greg passed away, I'm, I miss due diligence, right? Mm -hmm. Know what you're getting before you buy it, right? Mm, yep. <laughs> you can fall in love with the house, but don't buy the house until you've examined the plumbing, the electrical system, the foundation. What kind of deferred maintenance is there? <laughs> yes. It, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just know what you're getting into. It's, yeah. it's been my mantra for the last eight months or so about being single. And uh, so, yeah, I just had all the stuff that everybody had, and I didn't understand attraction. You know, most uh, like one of the popular conversations about men is why do men, why do men like bitchy women? Right. Like, what, what is it about them? Why do they like bitchy women? Mm -hmm. Well, they don't like bitchy women, but they like self-confident women. They like women who are clear, who are yes. direct, who ask for what they want and what they need. That is so much easier for them to deal with than a please, than someone. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even say a pleaser because we're not objects, right? Yeah. We have these very strong instincts that tell us we need to please and mm -hmm. avoid displeasing in order to be attractive, in order to be committed to, in order to be protected, mm -hmm. right? We never, we have such strong instincts that just like tell us, I mean, we're terrified to upset or anger a man, right? Yeah. And- Or anyone for that matter. If anyone for that matter, yeah. Anyone flawless. for that matter and double down for men because they're bigger and stronger and are you gonna protect me or attack me? Mm. So I adopted, uh, my stepdad, my stepdad used to say the best defense is a good offense. And I adopted that early on and and I just am a fighter by nature. You know, when I perceive a threat, my reaction is to fight rather than to freeze or flee. Mm -hmm. And so starting at about 16 years old, I I literally was, you know, hand over your balls and then we'll talk. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> give mm -hmm. me your power and mm -hmm. then we can have an interaction. Because mm -hmm. I was really afraid of men. And I didn't know I was a afraid of men. I just thought I was really mad at them because they're such jerks. And and it evolved over time. You know, by the time my friend was called a frog farmer, right? A woman who instead of turning frogs into princes, turns princes into frogs. By the time she was called that in February of 1991, I just was so normal and I had normal results. And I had normal wishes and desires, right? I, I wanted to be married. 
you know, to a loving, attentive man. I wanted, right? I still wanted all that. Mm-hmm. Um, and not much shot at it, even though I'd participated in transformation since I was 19 years old. And so when my friend was called a frog farmer, I got really excited that, wait, I'm doing something that brings out the worst in men? Me? I'm doing that? And I I loved it because I had tried hard enough to change men and it didn't work. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But I knew how to change myself, (laughs) right? I'd had 10 years experience transforming myself. Yeah. So that's when I started studying men with it. I thought it was more of an open mind. I it wasn't, you know. I, I even get caught now with assumptions, and that's in part of being single is making it as like, oh, I, I wanted to throw up. One of the oldest, grossest assumptions a person could make. I I made not long ago, and uh, oh well, cleaned up that mess. I just I was forgiven, but. Um, yeah, and, and so I just started out curious, and I didn't, and they've been fascinating for thirty years, and and then as I started learning who they really are, I couldn't stand that women didn't know who men really are because it's such good news. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much for sharing all that, and also thank you for. I love that you also illuminated that even today, doing all the work that you've done and now being in the space that you haven't been in in a while, right? You're newly mm-hmm. entered single in that single space, and you you've had these things come up and I appreciate and respect your vulnerability and sharing that with, with the listeners, with me, because there's always more. <laughs> this is how, that's the life of transformation, baby. You know, so I, I love it. And, and actually I was going to ask you about frog farming because I, I remember the first time I heard that from you uh, from one of your books and uh, I was just, it literally was such an aha moment for me. Like, Whoa. And, and not even that, but the fact that we as women have the ability to cause and create that in men, like we can't change a man, but by our way of being, we can actually disempower or, or empower a man to be his best or his worst self. Yeah. Like we hold that. Can I frame it in a, in a different way than I articulated in the Queens code? Yes, yes. Um, which, by the way, I'm, I'm writing a second edition this year. Yeah, I wrote it 10 years ago, and it needs to be updated. So I'm updating it. Oh, and so then I'm going to write the third book in the series. But, but something just, it, I've just found it to be a simple way for women to think about it, okay? And that is that, and it's true for women, for men about women too, but really where we want to be in relationship is with someone who wants to give us what we need, wants to provide for what we need and cares about what we need and and is generous about giving us what we need. And what frog farming does, what emasculation does, which diminishes a person's ability to produce results. So we do it to women and to ourselves as well. It, when you diminish a man's ability to produce his results, he he actually like steps back instinctually. Mm-hmm. So provide is the is the last instinct in the hierarchy. Before provide is protect. And protect always trumps provide. And before protect is procreate and all energy of creation, mm-hmm. all kinds of creation, like If a man is creating a business, (laughs) that is going to take up so much of who he is because of what that energy is. But what happens is we want people in protect and then we criticize them or complain about something or keep them guessing. We don't give them the information they need to know what it is that we need. And so now they have to, they flip into like if they've been wasting time and energy, now they've got to protect their time and energy because they don't have enough information to have it turn out well, right? Mm -hmm. And then if we criticize them for what they didn't do or what they did do, now they're protecting themselves. Yeah. So men and women both do this. We cause our wives and husbands and girlfriends and boyfriends and even our children to flip into needing to protect themselves from us. Mm. And so provide just disappears. They can't 
care about what we need when we're attacking them. And we often don't even, we mostly don't even realize we're attacking them. Um, and then other times we're attacking them on purpose, either out of fear or frustration. Yeah. And we're never, ever, ever, ever going to get what we need from them mm. with that approach. Mm. Uh, you said that so beautifully. So thank you. And I'd love to uh, unpack that awareness piece. So even just by like you, even <laughs> I'm going to say this from personal experience, I was criticizing and didn't realize that I was criticizing. So if, if you were to even say like, Ashley, you're criticizing me. I'd be like, no, I'm not. Okay. <laughs> so can, can you kind of speak into just giving the women listening right now heightened awareness of how ways that we emasculate men, maybe the most common that you see in, in your line of work, you know? Well, some I've mentioned, but they're worth mentioning again. Um, as human beings, we, we have a compelling instinct to conceal anything that can be used against us including ignorance so we don't ask another person so what do you think you need right we try to figure it out without asking mm. we don't want to reveal that we don't know and we also conceal our needs because instinct says to need anything is a weakness so for sure don't reveal that weakness to another human being they'll just use it against you mm. so we don't ask and we don't tell. We don't ask for what we need. We don't ask what they need. We don't tell what we need. We don't tell ahead of time. I think you need this and so I'm working on providing it. Do you want me to? All of those things that technically we could have conversations about, we rarely do. Mm. And, and we need to. And that's one of the ways that we prevent other people from producing the results they could produce because we just aren't giving them quality information. It's mm. like we're literally shooting in the dark, right? And we expect bullseyes and we all want bullseyes, right? And we want the reaction to a bullseye. We all want a wow, right? And we don't have the information to get it. Yeah. So if someone was gonna work on something, I would say get curious and state the obvious. Yeah. And ask. And you apologize. I'm sorry. I, you probably already know this. And right. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, or, and what I mean by get curious is question our own assumptions. And, and this was the mistake I made with my boyfriend. He made a comment. And instead of asking why he said that, I, it was like I jumped back three decades, four decades to, Oh, he's one of those guys. Of course he would think that, mm. right? Tall, handsome, athlete. He must have had women throwing themselves at him all the time, right? There was this whole, honestly, this whole assumption of promiscuity based on he's the kind of guy that women would be throwing themselves at, mm. right? And the assumption that, of course, he'd be the kind of guy that'd say yes to every woman who threw himself at him. No. <laughs> no no triple no right yeah. but I had projected all of that onto him and treated him accordingly and oh when I realized that I just I really did want to throw up I was so ashamed of myself mm. for having gone there when I know so much right 30 years of listening to these incredible people they're just not that, you know, that was all like my mother's imprint and, and girlfriends and I mean, I was such a teenager. Yeah. So anytime you think you know why someone's done something, and especially anytime you think they did it for the reason you would have done it, that's when we got to stop and ask, can I clarify something with you? I assumed you did this because of this or i'm making up that you did this because of this or i'm baffled by why you did this could you please right and um could you explain that to me could you illuminate that for me and then we have to put the duct tape over our mouth and keep letting go of 
the right answers, yes. right? There's four right answers. Which one of the right answers is going to say, and everything else is going to be wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. Yes, and we think we're open. Baloney. Yeah. Baloney, we think we're open. Uh, yeah, so. Oh. And, and curious, when you spoke, because obviously you've done tons of, work with men and studying them and, and, you know, having these, you experiment with them and all the stuff. So how do they actually feel? Like, what do they say when it's like, oh, when a woman either expresses her desire or asks a question, right? Like, cause we, I think we, as women, we fear this, like thing is going to happen. Like they're going to lose respect for us or they're going to, you know, whatever. We just think these things, we make up the story, like you said, the narrative. And mm -hmm. what is the actual truth that you've found in studying men? Well, so you express something on two different ends of the spectrum, ask a question or express a desire. Yeah. So the first thing that matters is before we express what we might call a desire, that, that we're really clear about it, right? That we know what it is. We know what it would look like to satisfy it. We know the difference it would make to have that met. So is this something that we actually need, meaning it's a big payoff and big consequence? Or is this something that make us happy? Like, wait, you know, no, no, I won't die without this. I don't need this. I'm not going to withdraw or shut down without it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll function fine. And it would make me really happy. <laughs> right? Um, they need to know that. Do you require this or mm -hmm. is it something that will make you happy? Um, so we have to sort that first. And then, um, and then the next thing we have to sort is notice, do we think they should already know this? Because that's where a lot of criticism comes in. Why do I have to tell you this? It's obvious the trash. And you should know out. this already, yeah. Yes, you should have known it and you should have done it. And I shouldn't have to tell you. So that's the whole domain of expectations and it gives us a crummy attitude. So even as we're asking for something, our voice is critical, our way of being is critical. And men think they're insensitive, women think men are insensitive. No, they're not. <laughs> they're actually really sensitive to how we're being. And we might have nice words and they can feel the daggers. Hmm. They're yeah. aware of them and, they, and that's when they go into protect mode, right? They're gonna defend themselves. So we have to, we gotta, clear our own spaces. That's why I use a lot of the Sedona method release techniques and stuff like that. Just sit. So by the time I'm communicating, I'm as clear as I can get to, including <laughs> if what Dan hears from me is, I'm as clear as I can get in and I need help. <laughs> <laughs> Truth is I really effed up and I need your help because I think I made stuff up <laughs> yeah and, and that actually asking for help and being authentic about a wreck mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. um oh then they want to protect us from yeah. whatever is causing that in us they just their hearts go out to us and they think we're so courageous to have spoken up and their admiration goes up and they they fall in love with us when yeah. we're willing to reveal ourselves like that and and so that's all good all, I that's all that's all on the good side um, questions questions are interesting because you have to distinguish it between a question which you'd be it would help me if you illuminated this. I'd be honored if you shared this with me. I'd be delighted to learn more about mm -hmm. scuba diving and what had you do it, right? Like, like, so you have to think of space. Is there a lot of space? It's their choice to answer it. It's It would be a gift to you for them to share this information versus why didn't you tell me that before? Right mm. or anything that the word they use is interrogation. Yeah, that I don't want to be interrogated. I hate being interrogated. Um, they hate being accused of things that they didn't do. It just drives them nuts. And so, you did that because you don't love me. They're just mm. like, 
uh, what am I supposed to do with that? <laughs> First of all, I didn't do the thing you said I did. And if I had, I wouldn't have done it for the reason you think I did. And after everything I've done, you think I don't love you? What the heck? Yeah. Right? So, so questions are, if you think about questions more like opening a gate to a playground, hmm. right? Like you're opening a gate, anything I encourage, especially women using dating apps, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, before we meet or I, I don't want to just text back and forth. I'd like to talk on the phone. And when we do, um, I'd be delighted if you'd share with me more about and you pull from their profile, mm -hmm. right? And looking for the things they're passionate about and they care about. And then so now they know you're inviting them to talk to them. It's not going to be a 411 interrogation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, these are going to be the questions that are being asked, right? That there's yeah. a curiosity there, which comes, curious comes from the Latin words that mean to care, right? Mm. And um, and they, like, they know what the game is, right? Oh, this isn't a job interview. This isn't an interrogation. She's interested in me. Cool, right? Mm. And these are going to be what we talk about. Oh, I can do that. You always want a man to have a I can do that reaction. It means it's worth his time and energy and resources when it's like, oh, I can do that. Mm. So, you know, ugh, we need to talk. <laughs> <laughs> when would be a good time for us to talk? Yeah, they hate next that. Year, next year, uh, when coronavirus is disappeared from Earth, uh, you know, they... They hate being in loser situations and they instinctually and consciously avoid them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. yeah. Does that help? So if you no, think of oh, a playground, like anything you would say about this, anything you'd be willing to share with me, or yeah. of course you don't have to tell me this. And if you would illuminate, right? Like that's that energy is everything. Choice. Yeah, because it's like what you said is they can feel the energy. So if we're coming in with an expectation and attachment, they'll be able to feel that. And that's going to have them, I mean, I would assume shut down. I would assume like feel uncomfortable and, and not open up. So which is the opposite of what we actually want. <laughs> we want them to open up. We want them to share with us. But I've done that before, for sure, where I've gotten attached to a certain way that I wanted it to go or I wanted him to answer it. You know what I'm saying? And I love what you said about igniting curiosity and coming into it with that sort of easygoing, just relaxed, sat back in your feminine, just curiosity. That's so important. And it actually fosters, I believe, trust in the relationship because then he feels like he can say what he wants to say and not feel judged by what he's saying or how he's saying it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Everything's saying yes and Men have very keenly attuned BS meters that they will ignore when they have a high degree of sexual attraction. And just as women will ignore their creepo meters when they have too much attraction. So authenticity is the second most attractive quality in a woman. And, and so that's why being authentic about I need help isn't enchanting to them. Um, don't pretend to be open. <laughs> mm. They can smell a right answer at 50 yards. Yeah. And, and so you have to, again, be authentic, you know, of, okay, I have a question to ask you. And this is actually in the domain of a deal breaker. I would rather be alone than be with someone who doesn't do this. Mm. Or I'd rather be alone than be with someone who does what you did yesterday. So I need to know, <laughs> is that a normal for you? Is that something you're committed to? Is that part of your identity? Mm. Uh, do you have to have that in your life? Can you live without it? Mm. So where are you at about that? And then again, you're still the duct tape, but you've 
been authentic about I'm edgy because this is one of those. Mm. And if you, if this is a part of who you are, then I'll just appreciate you and not try to keep you as mine. Yeah. Oh, because <laughs> if that's who you are and that's what you need, I'm not the right person for you. Yeah, I love that. And I just want to highlight this real quick for um, the listeners, or I should say kind of circle back on it because it was very quickly said <laughs> the number one uh, most attractive is confidence, right? Which is what which you, you said earlier, but it was just very quick. So just in case listeners, you were like, that's the second most attractive. What's the first? It's, it's confidence. First, yeah, self-confidence yeah. specifically, which yeah, self -confidence. confidence means with faith. So when you have faith in yourself. Yes. And um, the work I've been doing lately in our Smart Singles Intensive has to do with being as clear as you can get about what you need and then developing the muscle to be loyal to yourself. Love so that. So not betray your own needs. And when you know you can count on yourself literally to back yourself up, to mm -hmm. be like, no, no, no. This, oh, you're looking for that kind of person? Well, then we shouldn't even meet. Mm. The end, right? I'm not that person. Yeah. And, um, or like a, one of, one of my clients is, you know, she dates a lot. She's 72 <laughs> and it. she, so and she's very active, you know, in online dating and this man wanted to meet her and she told him, you know, he wanted to take her to dinner. And she said, I, you know, with COVID, I'm not willing to eat inside a restaurant and he came back at her with why not right mm -hmm. and she said now the kind the person i'm looking for would say oh of course let's take care of you what are you comfortable with mm. is and she wrote to him is that you <laughs> oh my gosh it's so good i love that yeah and so you know, next thing you know they ate dinner out door dining and she was practicing listening the way that I teach you know listening to learn which we teach in understanding men and and practicing you know the duct tape and waiting for the well and all, you know all that good stuff and this man who she thought was just going to be a jerk she said Rob Lowe think Rob Lowe he looks like Rob Lowe I was sure he was going to be a jerk no <laughs> Good looking men. They're in such trouble. I, I mean, yeah. really, the assumption is they're jerks and they're not. Fact, so they, they have, they often have no awareness, right? Just like women don't. Yeah. Um, well, that's one of the things I teach men all the time, by the way, is men make the assumption that a woman they find attractive knows she's as attractive as he thinks she is. Mm -hmm. Right. And so. Totally. And so that's why they make sort of offhand comments. Oh, you know, a beautiful woman like you, blah, 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 right? <laughs> you know, because you already know all this, right? Mm -hmm. and, um, and they don't know that we need to hear it, right? Mm -hmm. And it's funny, when Dan and I were first interacting by text and then we had a phone call and then I was like Ugh, I don't know I don't think so and then I'm like wait did I even ask for what I needed oh no I gotta give him another chance right and then I asked for what I needed and then I said before we even get into all this what are you looking for right what are you looking for anyhow and uh he's like I'm looking for adventure and exploration with a strong beautiful woman and I'm like, okay, I'm one of the strongest people I know. Do you consider me beautiful? <laughs> we talked about it. It's been five months now. We talked about it just a couple weeks ago. I said, you know, beauty is so subjective. Yeah, it is. And I only really, it only really mattered if you thought I was beautiful yeah. or not. Like, not that everybody does or anybody does or that even that I do. Since that's what you're looking for, do I, so do I fit? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and just being yeah. clear. Yeah. So, I, I well, if I may, there is. A, a, this is so perfect that you just talked about all of that because one of the questions that I get a lot from my ladies and also my friends who are single and going through the dating is, 
how soon is too soon to share those? What you talked about is like, these are my requires and these are my desires. Like, these are what I require. These are my non-negotiables, like deal breakers. And these are the things that like, this would be nice, but you know, don't have to have it. How soon is too soon to share those to um, when you're dating? Um, well, the way I like to say it is if you're going to run, run now. <laughs> yep. Um, instinct says wait until they like us more, love us more, and then reveal the things we think they'll reject us for, that by then they won't reject us because they love us too much to reject us. But then if they love you before you've shown them the rejection pieces, you won't believe that they love you in the first place because, you know, as soon as they find out about that, they're going to run. And so I recommend revealing them like in your dating profile. I recommend following up on them like. Um, it's okay if you didn't read my profile. That's normal. Um, but there are a couple of things in it that are critical to who I am and I'm committed to them and we should get it sorted out before we get attached to each other. Um, and then actually bring them up. Yes. And, you know, one of the things that I have on my, I'd rather be alone than be with someone who wasn't, right? I have a whole list of those, we call them minimum requirements, is that I want to be, I need to be with someone who can be with my freaky life, right? Like, I I need someone who doesn't have a problem with that my deceased husband is still meddling with my life. He's still providing for me. And, and there's a very good chance that he had something to do with that person being interested in me. Or that um or that I I didn't I mean I published three books. Two of them I didn't write. They were movies I watched and typed as fast as I could and had I don't control the characters. I don't control the plot. They they're they're so called channeled works, if you will, right? Mm -hmm. Or or that someone, you know, needs to be with it. Um I have they're called I call them kahuna hands. I have healing hands. And and they they mostly want to heal people's hearts and they get they see I talk about them and they, they start turning red they get all lit up when they can help they light up somebody you know has an ache or a pain if they can do something about it they they start like trying to reach the person well that's weird do you know that's some weird stuff walk up to a perfect stranger and say can I touch your chest <laughs> oh your mother broke your heart Oh, interesting. W would you like it healed? <laughs> mm. So whatever it is you think, they're going to reject me for that, right? If you have an STI, talk about it earlier rather than later. As soon as yeah. you start thinking, I want to jump this person's bones. Let's get clear about this, right? I have, a, I have herpes. I have HPV. I have hep C, I, what, I, whatever it is, the, you know, du jour is, or yeah. I, I don't know, I need to sleep in my own room. I use a CPAP. I need, I haven't slept with anybody in a decade. What right? about, what about like, even, you know, I am absolutely having children. I'm absolutely like marriage children, like right. Communicating vision mm -hmm. right away as well. Yeah. Um, yes. Definitely, and oh boy, let's see, how do I do this? So in under, our Understanding Women online course, we distinguish between hunting mode and gathering mode. Mm -hmm. And hunting has a specific goal or intention or destination, and it almost always has a timeline, has a by when in this period of time. And whereas gathering mode is like going into the meadow, there may be a couple of things you hope to find, but you're open to possibilities. What yeah. else is there here? Gathering mode is way better 
for romantic relationships and courtship and all that than hunting mode. Men do not want to be hunted. Husbands <laughs> don't respond well to being hunted. Baby daddies don't respond well to being hunted. I need to be this by this time. It, it actually brings out an edginess in women that is women men can put up with a certain amount of it but they don't want to sign up for a lifetime of it yeah no i think that's um, such an important distinction that you just made so thank you for yeah, that. yeah yeah and on the other hand right because i'm going to say honor yourself first no matter what if you're committed to having biological children and you know, given your age, that A, that either needs to happen in the next few years, B, I need, if you want to have children with me, but not yet, we should fertilize eggs <laughs> and put them away. Or um, one of my clients actually picked out an anonymous, you know, baby daddy and had, and harvested eggs and had them fertilized and is storing them so that she has insurance um, to find the right partner, mm -hmm. to find the person she wants to raise children with. Yeah. She, you know, and she's also storing just frozen eggs, unfertilized, which have a lesser chance of mm -hmm. coming to fruition. But it's, she's just taking care of all that so that she can be spacious for a man to be in her life and not top, top, we got to get this done. Yeah. Um, okay. Now, on the other hand of that, I would say if you're a woman who is committed to being married, is committed to having children, is committed to children being raised in a particular religion, um, watch for the phrase, I'm open to that. Do you want to be married? I'm open to it. That's not a man who's ready to be married and looking for his wife. Mm. That is a man who's like maybe three to five years of even that close to getting married. Interesting. Um, so I want to be married. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we both want the same future. Let's not get all dazzled that that means it's a done deal. Now let's find out if we're a fit. Yes. I, I love it. I love it so much. You taught me that. Uh, with your, I remember it's like it, it was when I was dating, it was circulating. Dating is a sorting game. You said that in, in I think it was in sync with opposite sex. You're like, dating it's is a sorting it's game. It's sort, it's sort, sorting. sort. And part of that, which I'm, you just elaborated on so beautifully, is what you just shared is expressing your needs. But I love that you made the distinction of, you know, not coming from that hunter space of like, it needs to be by this time, but, but literally just throwing it out there that, hey, this is my vision. Eventually, I, like, I want this, you know, it's like, it's just stating what you want, not by when, like, I need this by this time, because that's the expectation we talked about at the very beginning of the episode, that attachment, that expectation that just makes men be like, yeah. <laughs> and, well, and also, and if, oh, if I could say something about that, too, Ashley, is that stating your, your dreams, your goals in life, what your life's about for you actually gives a man more confidence about you like that you know who you are so then i know what i'm getting into instead of if you don't know who you are and what you want you're a moving target why would i commit to something that's unformed i don't even know if you don't know who you're going to be i don't know who you're going to be why would i sign up for that yes ladies write that down Take that, write that down. My single lady listening right now, write that down. So good. I will tell you from first experience, ladies listening, I've taken Allison's, like the, everything that she's saying, I put it into practice with, with uh, Gerard, my current, my king, my love, my life. And he literally told me exactly what you said. He said, like, I, obviously this was later on when we like talk yeah. about it with friends and stuff, we tell our story. He's like, when you, cause I came to him and I was in the very beginning and I stated everything um, my desires, my requirements, that kind of thing. And he's like, when you did that, he's like, I had so much respect in you, like of, of you. And I just was like, whoa, yeah. I was like turned on, you know, <laughs> and he was just like, I just thought that was so cool. Like you inspired me to a new level. And it was scary for me to do that. 
you know, to actually sit down and like, okay, here goes nothing, you know? And cause of course, what, what I was scared, I'll just say, speak for myself in that moment, I was scared of rejection. Right. And then being like, okay, well, I guess I got to walk away. And I really, obviously really liked him at that point in time, but I love that you said that. And I hope you ladies really heard that is that it actually has this, if it's the right man, he will respect you that much more. Um, if it's your right man, he will respect you that much more for, for just being true to yourself and being confident in, in what you want. So, well, yes. And what's cool about them is if they're like, Oh, I'm not the right person for you, but I know somebody, right. They're like, cause they, even if you're not for them, their respect and admir admiration wants them to hook you up with, right? <laughs> you know, yeah. and you need to ask the question, what's too soon? It's not too soon. We're usually too late. Yeah. And like in our Understanding Love and Commitment course, we walk men and women through, you know, start out with all your ideals because that's what you judge people by. And then from all your ideals, what would you rather be alone than be with someone who wasn't that? Mm. So those are your deal breakers. They're all standalone. Like you think it have everything else, but not that. Nope. And then of all the things, like if you imagine a table, Ashley, of all the things that you'd rather be alone than be without that, most of those are going to take some time to learn about somebody, to have show up about them, to see that they actually behave that way in life. But if you think of a table with all those on it, and then you set a bowl in the middle of the table, and these are the things that there isn't time. These are things that they need to already be. These are things that they need to have generated being in their life. These need to be, these are things that their friends need to say about them. Yeah. These are the things that need to be visible right away. And then you go looking for those things. How is this man kind? How is this man generous? How is this man considerate? How is this man honest? How is this man aware? How is this, whatever it is that you can't wait for because a person without that drives you crazy. <laughs> like, I don't know. I can't, I can't deal with this even for a minute. Yeah. They have to be in charge of that. Um, we call that your B list. And Dan and I had been talking on the phone and really shockingly liking each other. Like just like kept being surprised at how the other person do, does just was themselves. And so I went over my B list with him before we ever met in person. Like before I, before I knew what he looked like, before I knew mm. how tall he was, before I, we, I already was laying all that stuff out and describing I had 19 things on my B list and what each one of them meant. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and then he got to hear the other 24 things, <laughs> <It was 43. laughs> 24 minimum requirements, right? And uh, but, uh, which included doesn't need to be married or live together full time, different mm -hmm. stage of life. Right. Mm -hmm. but, um, so what's the, what's the A versus, uh, sorry, maybe there is an A list. You said B list. What, what, are, what is that? B as in B E like is in ways. Got of it. Being. Got it. Okay. That's what I thought you meant. Yeah. I just wanted to clarify yeah. if there was like an A and a B list. I'm like, what's the A and B? <laughs> There's a minimum requirements list. Got and it. then a subset of the minimum requirements list are, there's no time for this to show up. You better already be this or just stay away from me. Got it. And, um, but it's another thing that I would I would say we were talking in the beginning about to reveal a need is a weakness, right? Well, I encourage everybody, men and women, before you early on, like by by text or on the phone, definitely before you meet someone in person, express a need. Like I need to be off the phone in five minutes. What do they do? Do they go, oh, what do you got to do that for? Or, oh, come on, don't be a spoiled sport. Or, oh, we're just getting started. Do they argue with your need? Do not meet this person in person. Don't get together. Like, the end. If I say I need something and you attack what I need, mm. you're just physically attracted to me. 
You mm -hmm. actually don't even see who I am as a human being. You don't care about me. So you should go away now. And, you know, same man or woman, express a need. If you're like, hey, I got to get ready for work. And she takes, you know, 30 minutes to say goodbye instead of, oh, you should do that. Okay, well, call me when you can. Hope you have a good day at work. Bye. Mm -hmm. Like, let him go. Release him. And that's what I was starting to say to you earlier before about, you know, is the question a cage, right? <laughs> or is the question a playground, like opening a gate? And we yeah. cage people all the time, including we won't stop talking long enough to let them go when they're saying, I got to go. Mm. So whatever the need is, I need to be home by a certain time. I need to get off the phone by a certain time. I need to know the answer to this question before I think we should even go any further. Do they say, what's the question? Or do they avoid it, right? How do they interact with what you need? Mm, and being that observer is so important, trusting. Like, it's, it's funny. I even think there's probably women listening now who have done this where we'll get like dead set on a guy, which I know we, I want to be respectful of your time. We almost have time. We're almost at time here. But I wanted to ask you about like animal versus spirit attraction um mm -hmm. because sometimes we'll have such an animalistic like attraction to a man we try to like we try to like fit fit them in what we want them to be <laughs> and 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 so we ignore instead of observing we're actually uh, ignoring those things and we're you know betraying ourselves in the process um but i i would love to and i know that happens a lot with the animal when we're in animal I might be butchering the way that you say this, but it's because it's been a while since I heard you talk about it. But can you yeah. really quickly, if you have time, just to share with the listeners that animalistic versus spirit? Yeah. So we call it um, human animal versus human spirit or human normal, human instinct. All those are valid. Um, and so a couple of things about it. So in in the book called Making Sense of Men, which is a little tiny book, only takes a few hours to read, um, we talk about the four most physically attractive qualities in a woman, which is going to appeal to him at a primitive level, and the four most attractive qualities that appeal to him emotionally, intellectually, and spiritually. And um, so people can get more answers about that. And then how can you tell what kind of attraction he has. How will he respond and react to you depending on if he's attracted in a way that could actually lead to a relationship. Mm -hmm. And as women, um, we are attracted to strength. So what I would call our inner cave woman is constantly scanning for procreate, then protect, then provide. So who would make good babies? <laughs> who's strong enough to protect my babies? And who's strong enough to protect and provide for me and my babies? And we actually pay attention to that even when we're not making babies or don't want any babies, right? We're just, it's all hardwired. Yeah. And just protect your provider, protect your provider. And so this is how we get attracted, for example, to what people would call bad boys. Yeah. Because a, a bad boy appears to be strong. He's like defying convention or society or expectations. So that, that seems like a kind of integrity that seems strong to us mm -hmm. rather than a man who caves. Um, physical, you know, height and muscles and even like girth and all that kind of stuff um, appeals to us. Beauty. Beauty is something that, you know, you have status if you're with a beautiful man. So it increases your status and so you'll survive better. Or if you have children, that passes on to your children and there's all kinds of stuff associated with it. Um, intellect, you know, intellect is perceived as a strength and, but all of these things you have to watch for, okay? So this is the, like the thing I would have someone look for is, is your cave woman attracted to that person because you think he can keep you safe, right? Hmm. Or are you attracted to a person because they're not threatening to you? You think, oh, that's a safe man, right? Hmm. Or is this a man who you find yourself opening up a, who you are to in a 
real and yummy way you like who you are around them because he is safe. He's safe for you, mm. right? He's safe for you and had, causes you to keep like opening up like a flower the way that we do in sunshine and when we're safe. And, and you like who you are around that man. When we're just um, in human instinct, it brings out the worst in us. It really does. We contort, we try to please, we might attack. So there are men that we're really attracted to. What we'll do is attack them because they we feel off balance around them. Mm-hmm. So we attack them. Yeah, don't do it. <laughs> yeah. I don't marry your type. I did it. I promise you, I did it. I did it the first time. It didn't go well. <laughs> Second time, I did not. It went very well. 28 years of very well. Mm. Yeah. And one thing that really stuck with me, I actually just uh, shared this with my girlfriend the other night was, I think it was, you said if, if he's an eight out of 10 attraction level, like the chemo, chemo, that chemical kind of attraction, you're like, run the other direction. <laughs> yes. Yes. For men, I'm like, if it's a seven or beyond, really consider running the opposite way. For women, it's more like a five or a six. Oh, okay. We're such squinters, do you know? And we are so taken by type and beauty. And we're we're addicts. We're all chemical addicts. And you know, can you be loyal to yourself? Can you stand up to that person? Yeah. Can you say, Are you that guy? Right? Is this you? Or are you gonna pretend? Are you gonna squint? Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. I'm getting yeah, I'm getting everything I need. Yeah, I'm really happy. I am very, we're very happy together. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's so true. Oh. Yeah, so true. Yeah, thank you for that. It's also okay. like, and when we're squinting, we're also like overlooking our own values in a lot of those cases. Like if, if, you're, if you're consistently kind of crossing your own boundaries and your own values, then that's a sign that you're in, you call it human instinct. <laughs> Yes, an animal. Yeah, keep him being a ninny. Um, but and also the problem is, is it doesn't end up working because then you're not self confident and you're not authentic, and so they don't respect and admire you, which causes them to want to provide more for you. So the whole relationship is doomed from the beginning. Mm. It just looks good at the beginning. Yeah looks and may, may feel good in the beginning. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I think if we really looked, it doesn't feel good. That's just true, huh? Too, You're right? right. It's like too much caffeine, right? Yeah. It's, not, it's not a sense of well-being. Mm. It's bound up excitement. Thank you for that. That's it. That's yes. You're absolutely. I see that hundred yeah. percent. Well, okay, Allison, we're at, at the end of the episode. Now, the one question that I ask every woman on this female on fire series um, I'd love to ask you to wrap up the episode. You've been so awesome. This has been such a dream okay. and so cool just chatting with you and jamming with you about this. It's it's just awesome. So, okay. What is one thing about you that you maybe used to hide or dim or or mute or maybe even shame that you have reactivated and reignited along your journey to becoming the female on fire? That you are today. Um, well, there are two, and one I owned earlier than the other. So spirituality, like I was telling you about, letting Dan know about that early on, and sexuality. And a lot of people my age are signing off of sex. They're they're just like. You know, I'm looking for a companion, and they they think their sexual days are over. Hmm. And no, not for me. That's right. <laughs> um, you know, nearly 30 years of monogamy and having sex with this, my husband like 3,000 times, um, and... And it was it was awesome. I didn't, you know, I don't begrudge any of that. 
But after he died, and grief is such an aphrodisiac, and I just was like, you know what, I think we need to take the lid off of this. <laughs> and, and so one of those things, like if you're going to run, run now, that I represented myself in my own singleness was I'm looking for a, I'm looking for a lover. That's what I, I want a lover. So, and, and that was like, run now. If that's not what you intend to be as a lover, then go away. Cause I really want one. And, um, have you heard of Jaya Love? Do you know Jaya Love? No. It's Jaya.com. Okay. Well, here's a, just something for your readers to do. If you, if you want to, if you want to honor your own sex drive, um, go to Miss Jaya, J-A-I. Oh, yes, I do. I know exactly. Yes. Yep. Go to MissJaya.com. Take the quiz. I didn't like the quiz. I hated the quiz, quiz, but it worked anyway. The erotic blueprints. And then if you want to start advertising things you need, be loyal to your own blueprints. Yeah. So before, again, before I ever met my boyfriend in person, we'd already shared because we both were looking for lovers. We shared our erotic blueprints. We talked about it because I knew the quiz. Okay, so in that category, which ones were you saying yes to? <laughs> and yeah, it's the, so if I was going to say female on fire, it, yes, it's honoring my own sex drives and curiosities and things I want to explore and things that never happened in 60 years of being alive that I want to have happen. And oh my gosh, I'm having so much fun. I can hardly stand it. Oh, yay. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. And thank you for sharing that. That's so good. I am so grateful for you. And thank you so much for pouring into my audience. You've been amazing. I honor, appreciate you. Thanks You're for coming welcome. On the show. Keep going, Ashley. Do what you do. <laughs> thank you.